Hello! In this doodly tutorial, I take a look at getting colour inside the default characters. So I'm going to start with a clean scene. Um, what I, uh, the process I follow here is to bring in a new, bring in a character, export out that as an image, take that into a third party uh, or a different image manipulation program. I'm going to use GIMP for this uh, tutorial uh, or this example and then make some modifications, add some colour and bring that image back into Doodly so that it does look like the colour's been put straight on over top. So first off we need to pick our character which we're going to draw with. Um, I think with this one for my example I'm just going to use Agatha's Scientist. Um, it's a nice simple image, it's, it's clean, it's straightforward, it's got all its magic lines and paths which Doodly needs to be able to create it. So I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to scale it up, so the first thing I do is going to scale it up as large as I can so that when I capture it as an image there's enough uh, pixels there to get a clean edge around the edge of it. Um, so that's where I'm going to start. If you search for snip it'll come up with a snipping tool. Um, it comes with, uh, win with Windows, so every Windows machine should have it. So I'm going to grab a new snip and I'm just going to go around the outside of our character. Just drag a marquee selection around it and it grabs that as an image. And I can then save that. For me, I'm going to save it as Capture. So she's already done. So now I've got that character as an image all to itself. From there I'm going to bring it into a program called GIMP. Uh, GIMP can be very daunting the first time you look at it, there is a lot in here, but I'm going to keep it really clean and simple um, just for modifying this image to get some colours into it. So I'm going to open up that image which I just saved. Well, there she is. The first thing I'm going to do is scale up my image because uh, like I said with uh, pixel ratio to get a clean edge I do need some, uh, uh, some pixels in there to actually get a nice clean edge. So I'm going to go to image and I'm going to scale the image. As we can see to start off with, uh, the snip I got was really small. It's only 2,000 pixels by 600 pixels. Um, I know that Doodly's maximum pixels it brings in is 1920. So I'm going to make sure that my little chain link is connected. And I'm going to scale this image all the way up to its highest number is 1920. I might just go under that and make it 1910 just so I'm not going too, good, too big. So I'm just, it, that way, if you keep the chain link there, it's going to keep the same ratio between width and height. So with that, I'm just going to scale it and it's going to make that image bigger. But still not that, the clarity now, if we had a look at it at 100%, you can see the clarity of this edge is not very good. Um, so as a base image, first thing I'm going to do from over here, on the layers tab, you've got layers on the top. These are uh, first thing I'm going to do is hit this button here, which is a duplicate button. So I've got two copies of it. Basically, because I want my original one, I don't want to touch at all because um, I want to work in a in a fairly uh, non-destructive environment. So the first one I'm just going to uh, turn off, and I'm going to work on this copy. Uh, I'm going to want to use this magic wand tool which is just this one, and select the white. Well, actually, you can do that this way, or what I really should do is use deselect everything, go select by color, and then choose white. Then as we look around the outside of it, you can see that it's selected everything that's white. What I'm going to do now is actually create a new layer, just like that. And from that selection, I'm going to select, uh, invert it, which is Control I, and then use a black paintbrush. Make sure my paintbrush is really big. And I'm going to paint in some new black lines. Just so I've got the clarity of edge there. Make sure that all those 
All those scrolling ants are now black. Excellent. And then to see that again, I'm going to deselect all that as well, which is Control A. And I can see now that I've got a nice black line again, which is what I'm going to use over top of all my colors when I finish. Uh, next one I'm going to do is I'm going to create another new layer. I'm going to call this one base white because I want a I want one of these to just be plain white so I've got a white background so I can get rid of my original capture and just turn it off so I can't see it anymore and that way I'll know what image I'm actually getting but this capture is still very useful now because um, what I'm going to do next from this base capture is start adding my colors over top of this um, I'm going to use my paint bucket tool now the paint bucket just does one thing really really easily and it just adds solid colors so from the paint bucket I can then click on one of these squares here which will bring up my color picker um, so this is where you can pick your colors from there are a couple of different ways of choosing colors you can scroll your RGBs to in the scroller to get what you want you can pick via the slider on the side here which scrolls, tr scrolls through colors and then you can also pick how much black or white influence has over top of them as well you can also use your inkjet ink picker if you've got a sample image that you want to use you can open up your sample image and use your eyedropper to pick the colors that you want I've got it fairly straightforward I'm not too complicated with this one um, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple so I've only got some colors here I'm gonna use I'm gonna use black is my first color I'm just gonna drop a little bit of color in a belt there we go I'm going to use a dark blue on a skirt light blue on a top probably I'm going to want to use some pink on her hands or some skin tone on her hands I might use some skin tone here hands face neck legs and the other hand um, and I might want to use a oh, darker color for her hair And I really like the idea of some orange earrings. So she's got some orange earrings. Yeah. Right. And maybe some dark brown shoes. Right. So that gets me some base colors really, really quickly. Um, now with, with images, uh, what will happen is, as you can see, if I scroll in even further than this, um, back to 100%, the, the colors haven't gone all the way to the edges. So what we need to do is go to a paintbrush with a small size, take the site down and actually just clean up those edges so that uh, there's no white lines left anywhere. So this is the tedious part, but it's the part that makes your image look so much better. So I'm not gonna talk anymore. I'm just gonna go through and do my colors. Okay, so there we have her basic color. You'll notice that I've actually gone over top of all the black lines. Um, a lot of them are not there anymore, so there's no solid face or anything. Um, I've also gone outside of a few spots, so I'm gonna have to clean a few things up, which is fine. That's why we keep the original one right down the bottom. So if we go back to the original one and use our magic selector to go around the outside, come back to our color image one, I can just hit delete and that will get rid of all my white and everything outside of the colors which I don't need. I'll put 
that back down to a 50% so we can actually see what's going on. So you can see it's got rid of everything outside of what I need. If I turn my black lights, black lines back on, deselect that, so control A deselects everything. See that my color image is taking, taking a bit of shape now. It kind of looks like she's, you know, ready, you know, ready to be actually be drawn in. I've got a few messy bits, which I'm going to have to clean up. Um, so it's one thing I kind of always like to do is just go around and make, and just finesse my images a little bit so that they look really good. It's part of me being an artist as well is, you know, my craft is being, being perfectionist and making my images look really good. So a couple other tools which come in really handy right now just to clean up these edges. Um, this is mainly due to this being a bitmap. So I'm using bitmap images in this, which are a little bit more messy in terms of uh, lines rather than your vector-based images. Your vector-based images will give a much better edge, but these ways I get more control over uh, the image itself. So I can kind of go around and just clean up my edges, get rid of those white bleeding marks around the edge and any color that's not being deleted properly. Um, the other point, which is really, you know, you can see here right in the corner there, my orange hasn't worked properly. So I'm going to go back to my brush and just make sure that just, I'm all, I'm still working in this color layer because that's just underneath my black layer. My black layer can stay right on top and hide anything that I don't want to see. Um, so I can just go through picking the colors which I want. You know, there's a, like three or four pixels of brown there. So I can just choose my brown and just kind of go over top of that. Uh, and that's, that's what I'll do now is just finally clean up the edges. Because the edges, yeah, the edges are what make your image your image and stand out from anyone else's. So with that now, you know, with that now done, you can see that the image looks a lot, you know, it has a bit more color to it, a little bit more life. Could always spend a lot more time, you know, just spending in details, painting hairs in her, putting some two tones on her skin, just to make her stand out even more. But for this, for this, uh, this demonstration, I'm going to leave her like that. So with that, you can see that I've got rid of any excess stuff that I need. I might even resize my image a little bit closer to get rid of the dead space. Um, because there's not much dead space around the end, but I can just clip it like that. Okay. Uh, edit crop to selection. Image crop to selection. Invert. There okay. Image crop to selection. Gets rid of just the dead space around the edge. And now I can just go file, export as, and I'm going to save this as a PNG, but this will be capture color. Capture color, and it saves it as a PNG. And then I just go export. Um, I'm just going to save resolution and save color values for transparency, because I want that transparency there, and export. All right, so if we just have a look at that image as we pull it, as we go to she just looks like that beautiful so let's jump back into doodly here yeah. and now i'm going to search for i'm going to add my own agatha version
just going to upload it and put it in the scene. There she is. So now I'm going to line her up, just check my opacity so I can see through her nicely. Apply. Scale her up to match my scene. Zoom in a little bit. Beautiful. So now the one sits on top of the other, I'm just gonna do my settings and I'm not gonna have any erase, uh, apply. So it's gonna, so with that setting now, let's have a look at what happens when we just preview it. And there you have it, one quick sketched up colored image. So I think that looks really cool how she just draws over and then colors it in. You could spend more time doing custom paths to get her to color in any particular way that you want, but she is now ready for drawing and colored. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of use. If you do, leave a like, share and subscribe, leave a comment, and I can always get back to you with questions and answers. Thanks for listening. Until next time.